I am Professor Ashok Vishandas from Indian Institute of Public Administration. Today we are going to discuss about Civil Service Examination and Preliminary 2021 relating to the economic and social development theme. The key point is appointment of the Governor and the Constitution of India. Let us look at this. The according to Section 8 of RBI Act 1934, Governor and not more than four Deputy Governors are to be appointed by the central government, hence statement 1 is correct. According to section 7 of RBI Act 1934, central government may from time to time give such instruction to the bank as it may, after consultation with the governor of the bank, consider necessary in the public interest. There is no such provision in the constitution about this, hence statement 2 is incorrect. According to section 7 of RBI Act 1934, the governor and in his absence, the deputy governor nominated by him in this behalf shall also have powers of general superintendence and direction of the affairs and business of the bank and may exercise all powers and do all acts and things which may be exercised are done by the bank. Hence, statement 3 is correct. So, option C is the right answer. 193. Here the key expression are casual workers, provident fund coverage, regular working hours, overtime and the notification by the government. Holding that an employer cannot differentiate between contractual and permanent employees. The Supreme Court in Pawan Hans Limited and others versus the Aviation Karamchari Sangatan has ruled that casual workers are also entitled to social security benefit under the Employees Provident Funds and Miscellaneous Provisions Act, Code on Social Security 2020 and Code on Wages, their section 6 and 7 are related to number of regular working hours and weekly day of rest and overtime provision respectively. Hence, statement 1 and 2 both are correct. The Payment of Wages Act 1936 has been amended by Payment of Wages Amendment Act 2017 effective from 28th December 2016 to enable the employees to pay wages to their employees by cash or by check or by crediting to their bank account. The amendment to the act also enables the appropriate government to specify the industrial or other establishment to pay wages only by check or by crediting in his bank account. Hence, statement 3 is correct. So, 1, 2, 3 all are correct. Therefore, option D is the right answer. Here the key points are economic recession, interest rate, tax rates and public projects expenditure. Recession is a situation characterized by negative growth rate of GDP in two successive quarters. Some of the indicators of a recession include slowdown in the economy, fall in investment, fall in the output of economy. It is prudent for government and the central bank to follow expansionary fiscal and monetary policy respectively to stimulate the economy. Increase in expenditure on public projects is one of the tools to stimulate the economy at the time of recession as it triggers the virtuous cycle of investment which leads to increase in GDP and income in the economy and in turn increase the demand and thus completes the virtuous cycle. Hence statement B is correct. Increase in interest rate results in credit crunch in the economy which is not desirable at all in the time of recession. Therefore statement A is not correct. Increase in tax rate is not desirable either at the time of recession as income is falling in the economy. Therefore, statement C is not correct. Reduction in expenditure on public will lead to less government expenditure thereby not contributing much to output. Hence, statement D is not correct. In any case, statement D contradicts the correct statement given at B. So, the right answer is B. This relates to the market demand, substitutes, complement goods, inferior goods and the relation between the demand and price. 
Let us understand this law of demand states that other things being equal, there is an inverse relationship between demand for a commodity and its price. In other words, when price of the commodity decreases, demand for it increases. Hence, statement 4 is straightaway right. A consumer's demand for a normal good moves in the same direction as the income of the consumer. However, in case of inferior good, the demand move in the opposite direction of the income of the consumer. As the income of the consumer increases, the demand for an inferior good falls because it is downward sloping curve. Examples of inferior good include coarse cereals. With rising income, consumer demand more of the fine cereals such as rice and wheat instead of jowar and bajra. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. Complementary goods are consumed together. Example of such goods is, includes tea and sugar, petrol and bikes. An increase in the price of petrol is likely to decrease the demand for bikes. Similar is the case with other complement. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. In contrast to complement goods, goods like tea and coffee are substitutes, not consumed together. Since tea is substitute for coffee, if its price of coffee increases, the consumer can shift to tea and hence consumption of tea is likely to go up. The demand for a good usually moves in the, in the direction of the price of a substitute, hence statement 1 is correct. So, the option A is the correct answer. Urban cooperative banks Large cooperative banks were brought under the pur purview of the Banking Regulation Act 1949 with effect from the March 1966 and within the ambit of RBI supervision. The marked, this marked the beginning of an era of duality of control over these banks. Banking related functions were to be governed by RBI and registration, management, audit, liquidation, and so on and so forth were governed by the state government as per the provision of respective state acts. Hence, statement 3 is correct. The recent Banking Regulation Amendment Act 2020 enables the RBI to get all the powers, including those hitherto exclusively with the registrar of cooperative society. However, powers of the registrar continue to be with him, but the powers of RBI to override those of registrar remain. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. RBI has given new guidelines allowing primary urban cooperative banks to augment capital through insurance of equity, shares, preference share and debt instrument. The UCBs could raise share capital by issue of equity to persons within their near and area of op operation and as members also go through the additional equity share to the existing member, hence statement 2 is correct. So, 2 and 3, therefore, option B is the right answer. Here the key points are bond yields, federal reserve, RBI, inflation and short term interest rate. Bond yield is the return an investor gets on the bond. It depends on price of the bond which is impacted by its demand. The major factor affecting the yield is the monetary policy of the RBI, especially the interest rate, the fiscal position of the government and its borrowing program, global markets, economy and the inflation. Actions of the US Federal Reserve can impact the investment flowing in India. The investment by foreign players in the government security can be affected by this. This will lead to change in the demand of the government security and thereby impacting the yield. Hence, the statement 1 is correct. Actions of RBI determine the liquidity and also the cost of funds available in the economy. The cost of fund will directly impact the demand of government security and thereby influencing the its yield. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Inflation and short term rates determine the purchasing capacity. Therefore, this also has the impact on the demand and price of the government security, thereby influencing the yield. Hence, statement 3 is correct. So, the option D is the correct answer.
This question revolves around components of FDI, that is foreign direct investment. In capital account of balance of payment, we can classify into investment, borrowing and external assistance. Foreign currency convertible bonds, FCCB, foreign institutional investment with certain condition and global depository receipts are the instrument for the foreign direct investment in India. Hence, statement 1, 2, 3 are correct. Non-resident external deposits are a debt creating flow in balance of payment accounts and therefore not part of the FDI. Hence, statement 4 is incorrect. We have to eliminate. So, option A is the right answer.